Let's go ahead and get this live Teletown Hall started by turning it over to your city manager, Darren Atterbury. Go ahead, Darren. Thank you, Ian. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. I'm joined tonight, as Ian said, uh, with Mayor Wade Troxell and Larimer County Director, Health Director Tom Gonzalez. Boy, you guys, I'm going to miss talking with you every evening when this when this whole journey ends, but we're here together again tonight to try and provide information to our business community and people are interested in what's going on with the city of Fort Collins. So we're... Um, we're glad you joined us, and uh, we hope that we can respond to your to your questions. This session this evening is hosted both in English and in Spanish. So we know that this is an incredibly difficult time for our businesses and non-for-profit community, especially those who have had to close or reduce staff to comply with the stay-at-home orders. I'd like to acknowledge the incredible sacrifices that you all are making and appreciate you joining us. Um, I'm sorry that we're in the context that we are now. I know it's a sad time for many. I know it's very, very hard and very frustrating. And I just want to say that I remain as an informed optimist about where we're headed and where business is headed as well. But that's not blind optimism. I have a chance to talk with experts around the country our public health director here in Larimer County throughout the state, and also with officials from CDC and federal government, I remain an informed optimist. So I'd like to just um, acknowledge uh, what you all have been going through and your, your employees have been going through. Our team is holding two business town hall events this week to provide different day and time, day and time options that work with your business operations and to be mindful of modified work schedules, which we know many of you are under. The second option to this evening is Thursday, April 9th at 10 a.m. These town hall meetings provide a platform to share for us, hopefully to share clear and consistent information from the city of Fort Collins, both my office as city manager, the mayor and city council, and then also our public health department uh, led by Tom Gonzalez. So we want to be consistent. And uh, that means we're all trying to get in the same spot and try and hear what each other, each other are sharing and what we're learning together. So after uh, we scheduled this call uh, earlier, we realized or, or have, were informed that Governor Polis announced that he'll be making some televised comments tonight at 630. Uh, that's why we bumped this up a few minutes earlier. So we appreciate everyone for joining us and sorry for that change, but we did that so people could have easy access to the governor's comments this evening. So uh, just as some background information, we've developed a community newsletter that you can sign up for. I encourage you to do that. I've gotten great feedback. that This is very helpful to people in our community. If you go to fcgov.com slash coronavirus, uh, there's some really good community-wide information in there. Businesses can also visit fcgov.com slash business for updated resources and information specific to small, medium, and large businesses. And I will tell you, I know the team of folks that are building these resources here locally and with the county and with our par partners at the chamber and, and SBDC and others, um, they're, this is, this is real time as they can be. So um, if you looked at it a week ago, know that the information uh, will be different if you look at it tonight. So I heard a presenter last week in a session that the mayor and I were in, and, and um, they, they had this great mantra, sticking together while staying apart. And uh, this is just a fabulous opportunity for our businesses to work together, and, and whether it's through supply chain or neighbors, and also to work with the city. Our own organizational budget as a city will be greatly impacted, I believe, by this pandemic. We'll be sharing a lot more about our budget process and about um, some of the changes that we've made. I'm happy to answer questions at the seat to this evening, but I'm, I'm not sure that's why you're all here. The Economic Health Office is working closely with our regional partners, the Larimer County Workforce and Economic Development Office. They're doing very, very good work. Fort Collins Chamber of Commerce has been a great partner throughout this process and the Larimer County Small Business Development Center. A lot of work that you're seeing for the business community is because of these strong relationships and these partnerships. So I'd like to express my gratitude to the leaders of those organizations 
and also to the people who are doing push-ups, getting information out. Our economic health office at the city of Fort Collins, led by Josh Burks, um, Sana Kendall and Shannon, H- uh, Shannon Hine are doing amazing work and and um, really unceasingly. They are working all hours and all, all days of the week. As many of you know that um, city facilities do remain closed to the public. Anyone who needs assistance with the city service is encouraged to call the appropriate department. There's a lot of resources online. If uh, you're not sure who to contact, call 970-221-6500 and we'll get to you. I, I, um, we are an essential business considered by the governor and Tom Gonzalez's uh, orders. And we're taking that seriously. We're taking the governor's orders of, or uh, requirements to, to reduce workforce. Uh, in many cases, we have zero people in many city facilities throughout the organization. They're working remotely. They're telecommuting, doing all kinds of things. But you'll notice if you've been out in the community, we also have many city crews uh, pulling uh, fiber for our broadband organization, light and power, water, wastewater, stormwater, um, uh, police services, Poudre Fire Authority, and others. So um, uh, all those services are continuing, but the city by no means has shut down in this, in this, and is uh, standing ready for your calls. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our Mayor, Wade Troxell. Mayor? Uh, thank you, Darren, and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, you know, my heart goes out to all our businesses during this very difficult time. You know, uh, not to get confused with terminology, I think all businesses are essential. And But we also have to understand the coronavirus and the challenge that we have. And so that's why um, we will do everything that we can do to uh, uh, strengthen our businesses, even during this very difficult times. Although we're talking about lives as it relates to the pandemic, uh, we're also talking about livelihoods. And, and so with that uh, combination, um, that's why we're reaching out uh, to our businesses tonight. And I understand now we have over 100 businesses that are on our call right now. And so thank you all um, for joining us. And I just want to echo Darren's sentiment that we are committed to providing um, the community and our businesses clear communication through this crisis and into our recovery. And I, from my perspective, uh, we need to be planning for recovery now so that it, our, our businesses can, uh, can, uh, can uh, get up to speed and strengthen um, in a timely way. I'd also like to reiterate how important our business community is um, in including all of our small businesses who make up the majority of our businesses in Fort Collins. Our Fort Collins Economic Health Office and our regional partners like the Fort Collins Area Chamber of Commerce, the Lamar County Economic Development Office, and the Lamar County Small Business Development Center are all working together uh, daily to uh, best support you. We knew it would be important to host separate business meeting town halls because we can't all talk about the crisis without also talking about the massive impact that it is uh, that it will have on our business community. The city continues to identify business resources and is continuing uh, with regional partners to field questions during this difficult time. And please keep your uh, neighboring businesses in mind as you are making spending choices and supporting them however you can, whether it's a takeout from our great local restaurants or taking advantage of curbside pickup or uh, shipping options from our local retailers uh, or continuing your subscriptions or purchasing gift cards or taking, um, or, or excuse me, talking about, um, you know, about them on your social media it's inspiring to see our businesses make modifications and pivot during this time to serve the community and find ways to create value that deliver and serve our community while also providing for uh, their staff and, and so forth. And also we can't forget about those that are um, selfless, selflessly serving our community, the first responders, the hospital workers, and the other critical and essential workers um, uh, that are providing meals and sentiments of support. I want to. Uh, I want you to know that the city of Fort Collins leadership and staff are doing everything we can to be diligent, reliable, and responsive while keeping the community 
safe and our business impact at a minimum at the and these are at the forefront of our decisions. Fort Collins has always been a community where people care about one another and particularly in very difficult times which you're in and this situation is no exception. I also want to continue to stress the importance to our residents of practicing the recommendations and actions to keep each of us and keep our neighbors and each other safe and healthy. And Tom Gonzalez will uh, talk more about this in just a moment. Uh, this includes being mindful about others when buying groceries or supplies. Please do not panic buy or stockpile and please uh, uh, exhibit uh, uh, physical distancing and now wearing face masks uh, to protect the spread of the virus. I'm grateful to live in this wonderful community and I encourage all of you to keep supporting one another and doing your part to stop the spread of this disease. With that, I wanna to introduce Tom Gonzalez. He's our Lemmer County Health Director. Tom, thanks for being with us here tonight and for your partnership. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, City Manager Atterbury. I appreciate being on the call and uh, looking forward to uh, the questions and being able to answer those tonight. All right, thank you everybody who's joined our live Teletown Hall today. Uh, looks like we're ready to start our Q&A. We have City Manager Darren Atterbury, Mayor Wade Truxel, and Larimer County Public Health Director Tom Gonzalez here to answer your questions. We're gonna get our first one up live from Jesse. Hey, Jesse, you're live on the line. Go ahead. Hi, Mayor Trachel. My name is Jesse De La Cruz, hi, Jesse. and I have. Hi, how are you? Or actually, Mr. Gonzalez. Um, so when when the whole shutdown happened, we woke up as a landscape industry, and a lot of other business owners didn't know whether we should operate or not because there was not much. Um, we almost felt like we were a forgotten industry. So. The only thing that we found was question and answer page on the Lamar County website saying, no, we were not essential. And then by that afternoon, it had changed to, yes, we are essential. So I would like to know if we are essential business. We have made steps um, to not, I, honestly, as in operations as they go, we do not have to communicate with any of our clients for the exception of sprinkler startups which we would need access to their home and we could take safety precautions for that. And I was wondering what, you know, if you could tell me what it is and what it isn't. Yeah, sure. um, thank you very much, Jesse. And I'll turn this one over to You're Tom uh, to describe everything that goes into the understanding of essential business, Tom. Yeah, thank you for that question, Jesse. Tom Gonzalez, your public health director. Uh, in our order, landscape is considered an essential business and must fully comply with the strict physical distancing, as you indicated. And I'm asking that any non-essential uh, landscaping, more decorative, decorative work uh, be delayed, if possible, to lower the risk for exposure. When it comes to some of the other activities you're talking about, yes, uh, I'm asking that we follow uh, strict physical distancing. We use creative approaches uh, to that. I uh, understand that the activity of landscaping as one of my family members uh, does that as well. So I'm asking that we take strong precaution. When we are in an area within close to that six foot uh, bubble, we should be wearing our fabric masks as the governor suggested. We should be washing our hands thoroughly often and really working with your workers to not touch their face. The goal here is to lower the amount of the spread, extend our social distancing, to keep our hospitals beds open, our ventilators available for those people that have medical attention. So thank you for your question. You're welcome, thank you. Thanks, Jesse. We've got our next question coming in. Uh, we've had we've had a few questions that were submitted in advance of the call, and so they're going to be kind of our conversation starters. We've only got a couple of questions in the queue past that right now. So next question is this: What should I do if I'm having trouble paying my sales tax or property tax? Who'd like to take that one on? Darren, why don't you take that one? 
Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I, I'm not able to speak to property tax payments to Larimer County uh, this evening, but we can certainly get you information, and I can assure you that Larimer County has information up on their website. Well, we at the city have announced a number of days ago that qualified business taxpayers can defer payments for 60 days. So tax payments that are currently due on April 20th or May 20th would be extended to June 20th, and the 60-day deferral applies only to sales tax payments associated with the filing dates during the months of March and April. And listen, here's what I've heard as well in talking with our CFO, Travis Storen, and our sales tax office. We know that this is a very difficult time for businesses, small, medium, and large. We know that there's going to be troubles and struggles in being able to make those payments. What I want to encourage is um, go online first, take a look at the Four Collins of the Sales Tax site, um, but, but let me give you a phone number, 970-221-6780. That's our sales tax office number. Um, I was telling the mayor and the council last week that what we're going to do with Travis's leadership is we're going to sit down with businesses and try and, when we can, develop customized responses to this question. In other words, we want to really look at, on a case-by-case basis, what we can do to help in this space. And so far, really encouraged by uh, just the attitude of our leadership with the mayor and council about that topic and also in our sales tax office. So, Please, if you don't find what you need on the website, 221-6780, folks will be there ready to ready to help uh, develop a customized program that will work for you. Thanks so much for that answer. Let's get our next question up. Uh, this one's coming from Justine. Hi, Justine. You're live. Go ahead. Hi. Um, my name is Justine Reed, and I own White Balcony. It's located downtown. It's retail, non-essential. Um, So I love that you guys, especially Sana and the Economic Health Department, keep referring to the idea of recovery. And you're right. I would like to talk about that now instead of waiting. So my question is, what exactly are the metrics that the city is watching for to determine when to lift the order to stay at home and encourage citizens to venture out again? Well, thank you, Justine. And I'll start off and then I'll look to Tom. Uh, Tom, uh, actually, it's through our Lambert County health director and also our, our, our governor um, are the ones that are, are determining um, the uh, stay in place and essential business definition and so forth. So, but I'll give it my layman's version, if you will, and, um, and what I'm looking at in terms of, of recovery. We're at a critical juncture right now within uh, the COVID-19 uh, virus in terms of of the infection and it's uh, slated to peak in the next couple of weeks. And Tom can be more specific as to what the models are showing. But the whole point, or one of the main points is that spread of the, um, uh, of the virus is uh, exponential in that it grows. Uh, and that's why we need to stay in place and the physical distancing and the, the fabric masks and so forth are so important are washing our hands so that we can basically so-called flatten that curve or and have it start to decrease. And that's when we're beginning to uh, deny the virus uh, spread uh, within our uh, community and, and with communities around us. And so that's the important part. When do we get to recovery? Well, it's when that begins to flatten it and decrease to the point where um, there will be measures taken to begin to open up the economy in ways that uh, low-risk workers, those that might have re- uh, had the COVID virus and have an antigen antibody against it, uh, they might be a low risk to get it, and th- they could begin to be reinduced, re- reintroduced into um, businesses and so forth. And uh, the best thinking at this time, I'll leave that to Tom and, and his modeling, but the point is, is we need to break, uh, essentially flatten the curve and then break the cycle of the uh, of the infection. And, uh, and, and Tom, uh, I'll turn it over to you to give you the best modeling as to what we're uh, trying to do right now to get to that point. Yeah, thank you for the question. And I understand this is the frustrating part. What we're using is what's called predictive modeling. And there's a lot of assumptions that are put in there. The number of uh, positive tests we have, what we believe we're getting at social distancing. Even at stay at home, we're 
probably at best 55 to 60 percent social distancing and then knowing learning more about this virus that we're learning is very contagious in the upwards of two to three times more contagious than other viruses including influenza so when you put all that in we're working with the colorado school of public health and we're working with bright minds doctors phds scientists statisticians trying to see where this what we call flattening the curve will begin and where it will peak and where will it end and i'll be honest it's 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 not what i would say exciting it's actually more uh concerning in the sense that we're in this for the long haul now when can we get out of a stay-at-home order i don't know the virus makes its own date but we're trying to determine we've seen various models show that the peak of the plateau we're calling if we continue to do uh, the stay at home and the good social distancing is probably the end of the month, first part of May, but then we have a long trek back down, which puts us in to the holiday memorial weekend. Then where we're looking at, or we're really talking about the recovery piece is how do we step back into normal life? But we know that we can't have large group functions. That's where this, this virus really likes to do its spread, where it, we're learning that it can, one person, infected that could be asymptomatic uh, through the droplets can get four people infected then those four people off to the races we go 16 32 and and that's what got us into this so it's a difficult answer i'm trying to get my arms around it we we put together a research and modeling team that i I was talking about with the colorado school of public health right here at colorado state university and and we're trying to get a better handle on it but it's going to be a step back down and it's going to take time and best dates we're seeing are two to three months most likely where we're starting to step down that's what the model is showing today that could change tomorrow sorry i don't have more uh, promising news there thank you i appreciate it thank you justine thank you justine all right let's get our next question up our next question is coming from queen hi queen you're up thank you so much good afternoon good evening um, my name is Queen. I am a community member here. I appreciate all of you for coming on. Hello, Tom, Mayor Wade, and Darren. My question um, is when we speak about relief, um, I am a nonprofit. I do a lot of direct giving. I am on the ground. Um, I'm helping families, especially the families from base camp and school. And I'm wondering, are we giving businesses incentives for donations to nonprofits doing direct giving, like food or yard equipment, building supplies, and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you, Queen. Darren, would you like to start that, please? Yeah, what I may suggest, and actually, before I respond to Queen's question, I want to say to Justine, Justine, I can hardly wait till this stay in place gets turned off so I can come visit your store again. Um, we're so lucky to have you in downtown Fort Collins and, and your store is fun and and as well as lots of other places. So I, I guess I just want to react to you and let you know, I know you've been in touch with our office and Sauna and others, and I appreciate that you're here. I appreciate that you're engaged and um, uh, I, I look forward to, to visiting when, when, we're, when we're out of this. And I hope Fort Collins comes out in, in big numbers and supports local businesses and, and we get things going. You know, I, to, the, to the question about nonprofit, I, 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 let me just say um, we know that building community takes a really, really important um, – uh, there's a, there's a, there are a lot of co-creators – in this portfolio of building a community. And and I'll get to the question specifically, maybe and have an idea that I can share. But I I wanna say, I think when we talk about building community, um, certainly local government has a critical role. We we talk about world-class municipal services. We're trying to deliver the best quality services we possibly can. We also know that organizations like Colorado State and K-12 Pooter School District and, and um, you know, so education plays a major role. Healthcare, Banner and UC Health, and they've been partners to this. 
you know, the for-profit sector uh, that keeps the economy going. It's so critical and uh, to keep a vibrant community. And then one that I like to talk about as well is philanthropy. You know, our time and our talents and our treasures. We have some amazing philanthropists in Fort Collins and, you know, uh, many that are that are at, a, at an amazing level and many that are giving, like I said, their, their time and their talents. So that's really important in the portfolio of building community. And then non-for-profit. The economy, the sub-economy, if you will, that it, that goes with our nonprofit sector is phenomenal in Fort Collins, and they fill such an important role. And um, and there are some big gaps right now. So what I would suggest, just to kick off the the question, and Mayor Troxel, you might have some some other comments, but I yeah. would say. Um, you know, there there are organizations out there. We have something as simple as um, our volunteer program where we're trying to match needs with people. Um, United Way of Larimer County has really stepped up. I think um, um, there's a, just a number of different resources. Non-for-profits are right now, I think, um, sharing what their concerns are, what the needs are. I think they're really worried as as a community partner of mm-hmm. Sort of losing out in some of the some of the space right now because the coronavirus has been um, such a consumer of resources. I'll just say from my office, and again, I think I can speak for the mayor and city council that um, you know we recognize that the non for profit sector plays a really really important part of this role in this portfolio of building a world class community. So I'm not sure, Mayor, if you have anything that you want to add to that, yeah. but. You know, Darren, uh, you mentioned the United Way. I think that's a great resource in helping to connect businesses with nonprofits that are in need. And uh, just to make a statement, you know, clearly that we believe that nonprofits are an important businesses in our community, um, and they're eligible for state and federal relief and could access a one-stop shop, which I'll mention in just a moment. But you can uh, go to United Way's website at U. W A Y L C United Way Lammer County dot org. And uh, with that, you can be, get contact connected into uh, some of those uh, uh, resources. And uh, just uh, thinking about uh, the one stop shop, uh, I should mention that our economic health office within the city of Fort Collins, the Lammer County Small Business Development Center, the SBDCs. Uh, the, the, in the Chamber of Commerce, Emmer County Economic Development are all working as a regional one-stop shop uh, to work together to help uh, guide and uh, you know towards uh, the answers that you're looking for. So thank you very much, Queen. Thank you. Appreciate you, Queen. Thanks. We've got our next question coming from Joanna. Hi, Joanna. You're live. Go ahead. Good evening, Tom, Wade, and Darren. Hi, Johanna. Hi. Um, I have a question related to undocumented uh, business owners, and I have to expand this so we don't get people uh, saying comments that are not accurate. These are undocumented people that have business, and they have a TIN, a tax identification number, so they pay both personal taxes and taxes on their business. But because all the help from the federal government right now is preventing them from accessing any of the loans and any of the COVID-19 help, they can't access any of that. Is the city thinking in different ways to uh, be creative with this small business? This include restaurants, cleaning places, so many different businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Johanna. Darren? Hi, Johanna. This is Darren. Uh, it's good to hear your voice, and thanks for being part of this discussion, and, and um, also thanks for the for the recent contacts and and the ability to do another uh, town hall forum uh, in the future, I'm really mm-hmm. excited about that, and I'm grateful for your leadership. You know what? I this is a conversation that we've been having within the city. I um, I don't have a lot of details, but I would suggest to you that the the contact for for that question uh, would be through our social sustainability office. You know those folks well, I think. Uh, their number is 970-221-6595. Um, you know Jackie kozak Teal and, and Beth Souter and, and Janet Freeman. I think they're all working in this space. And uh, although I can't answer specifically, 
Um, I do know that they're all listening in, and and um, um, if I can defer that to uh, to to another conversation, I'd really appreciate it. But I I will tell you, I think it's a very important topic. I want to acknowledge that, and um, I think we're uh, really really trying to work hard in this space. So please contact uh, Social Sustainability, and um, I will also follow up with them tomorrow. Um, to make sure that we've we've answered your questions satisfactorily. Thank Great. you, Darren. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Darren. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Johanna. And we'll get to our next question from Mike. Mike, you're live. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Um, Hi, I own some, oh, Hi there. I own a couple downtown buildings, the one with the Crown Pub, and there's a couple other stores in it, and then the one with the Starry Night Coffee Shop. And, you know, our bank... Our banks, and I can speak for a lot of the other downtown building owners, um, our banks have, by and large, given us interest-only payments. Uh, they haven't abated the payments or, or paused them at all. Um, but it has been helpful. And we, in turn, gave anywhere from 50 to 70% rent breaks to our tenants. Now, the, the amount, the, the break that we're getting from the bank doesn't even come close to the break that we're giving the tenants. And this isn't just, you know, myself, this is many of the downtown business owners. And now these, you know, enormous, I think our property taxes on the Crown Pub are $35,000 a year. And these enormous tax bills are coming due. And <clears throat> I want to know, I know you guys are really busy and you've got a lot on your plates, but I want to know what kind of discussions you've had to push back those April 30th uh, property tax payments? Well, oh, thank you very much, Michael. Um, just to start off the discussion uh, here, um, on March uh, 20th, uh, Governor Polis uh, signed the executive order granting county treasurers the authority to waive the delinquent tax on the first half of property payment uh, received after the due date of March 2nd. And then this executive order also remains in effect for 30 days until April 20th. And based on this executive order, the uh, um, county treasurer Irene Josie will waive the interest as, as follows. The taxpayers who have not um, made their first half payment and and expect difficulty making the full payment by April 30th, now have until April 20th to make the first half payment um, with no delinquent uh, interest. And the second half payment will remain due on, on June 15th. So there has been some accommodation. And with, as you know, property taxes, a county function. And so I think that's a start. I'd also encourage you to work with our economic health office uh, for any additional provisions, as some of these dates uh, do change, um, as Tom pointed out, with the uh, the uncertainty of of the opening up of the uh, 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 due to uh, the, the virus. So, I, I don't anybody else, uh, Darren, or, or have anything on this? Well, the, this is Darren. The only thing that I would add is that the. Um, the mayor and city council, as as business owners and property owners and employees and residents, are communicating via email. I I do want to let you know you're not the first property owner to express uh, frustration about this, um, and uh, I know that I know that there are some property owners business or property owners in town that that are um, you know feeling like um, there's you know, coverages for um, many different populations, but maybe not enough attention to some of the property owners as well. So I guess by saying that, uh, what I want to do is just acknowledge that um, that's you, that's not the first time we've heard that comment from a property owner. And um, when we are in these conversations, part of it is part of the purpose of tonight isn't to have the answer for everything, but to hear the feedback um, and if, if people just have comments and don't necessarily, you know, demand an answer this evening, um, we do note these comments and we make sure that they are communicated um, as, you know, whether we have conversations with state or our federal legislative delegation. Um, this information, as we take it down, is, is 
really helpful to communicate to uh, other entities that we work with. So I, I just wanted to acknowledge we've heard that before. You're not the only voice on this one, and um, we'll commit to communicating that with our federal delegation and our state delegation. Thanks, Darren. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. All right, let's keep going through these questions. We've got one coming up from George. Hey, George, you're up. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is George Grossman from Happy Lucky's Tea House. Uh, we got two locations, one in Old Town and one down at Front Range Village. Um, there are a lot of many uh, websites out there right now, lists um, like the DBA, Business Fort Collins, the Chamber, all asking folks in our community to support small business with delivery services, buying gift cards, curbside services. So this is, um, I see this as a prime opportunity for the Economic Health Office in the city to launch a full force Love on Fort Collins shop local campaign. I think it's, it's really happening organically right now, but it needs kind of a cohesive message. And the city, I think, is in the prime opportunity to really influence, influence that and direct its outcome. So my question is, what are the barriers that we need to overcome to launch such a Love on Fort Collins campaign? Well, thank you, George, and thank you for uh, um, Happy Lucky's um, uh, great, great uh, uh, store in Fort Collins, and, and appreciate uh, your active involvement. Um, you know, I, I think this is a great idea, and I, I would like to think, uh, well, and this is very much in the context of co-creators that Darren mentioned, starting off as, uh, you know, organically uh, growing uh, the uh, support for Collins businesses is, is great. The one thing that the city can do through its economic health office is be a convener and hopefully uh, bring together and perhaps provide, you know, um, uh, some resources, but really it's the uh, nature of the businesses coming together with a great idea. And I think what you've done is uh, uh, bring um, an, a, a, an organic great idea to that uh, bubbling up. And so I appreciate that. And hopefully um, we will reach out to you and see what we can do to help take the campaign uh, to a level that, that it's uh, it's known by by everyone in our community. Darren? Uh, George, it's great to hear your voice, and, and thank you for your passion for business in downtown and south side of town. And I guess I would just echo what the mayor has said. You know, there are, I, I think for people, you know, um, it's important for us to say, look, if, you know, buy gift cards now and use them later. Um, these downtown businesses really benefit from that. I mean, there's there's a lot that I think we can we can do, um, but George, to your question specifically about a shop local sort of campaign, as I think you know, back years ago we had a very successful program. I think it made a ton of sense, and we got a lot of uh, positive responses from that, and and businesses actually saying it worked. So it's a great idea. I've written it down. I appreciate it. I know you've been a vocal, you know, you've been a, a loud voice about that. If I can also say, since I have you on the phone, George, and others in the downtown area, if you haven't heard, um, we are going to delay the construction of the Linden Street project, which is basically just right north of, of Old Town and on Linden, south of Jefferson, that streetscape. We've got the money to do it, um, but we think after talking with businesses that it's probably best to postpone that until January. So that construction, that decision has been made. My concern is that if we had gone under construction and we had some sorts of backup, or I mean, uh, backup in the project and we were delayed, um, we didn't want to run the risk of moving into your Christmas season, which is really critical for downtown Fort Collins. So, and I know, George, you expressed some concerns about that and talked with our staff. But after a lot of uh, conversation with the contractor and businesses, we're going to move that to January. And we'll have that project done in time for uh, for the new West Fest season. So, sorry, I wanted to add to that. But I like the shop local campaign, and I've got it on my tablet right here. Thank you. Right. And and thanks, George. And I'm sure you, you're aware of the Downtown Business Association is running a campaign right now, Support and Save. And so uh, those that may not be aware, go downtownfortcollins.com and their Support and Save program there is in the, the direction that you're talking about. And also um, through our Open uh, for Business uh, website, there's uh, some information with regard to support Fort Collins businesses through covid 
uh, 19. And so just there, there are some resources out there. And as you pointed out, uh, George, there's a lot of different websites and things going on, but those are a couple that you can look to or other people on the line that may not be aware of uh, what's going on specifically in, in downtown Fort Collins. Thank you, George. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And, and Darren, thank you for answering my follow-up question. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Thank you George. Bye-bye. All right, we've got our next one coming from Sarah live. Uh, this is a last call here for any questions. Sarah, you're live. Go yes. ahead. Yes, hello. My name is Sarah Morrison. I wanted, I mostly have a comment and actually ask for your help um, for a whole host of businesses. I feel compelled to comment that to raise specific awareness to the plight of the sole proprietor and self-employed of the close contact businesses. I myself am a massage therapist. I've been practicing for 20 years. I deal primarily with pain. I have friends that are um, estheticians and hairdressers, and we are forbidden to work. And from the sounds of it, it's going to be six months or better before we get to open our businesses. Yet we're still supposed to pay our rent and support our families somehow. And everyone thinks that we can get these disaster loans or small business loans or even unemployment through the state of Colorado. Well, I'm here to tell you those sites are still closed to us. No one has responded to my applications on those that, that end. And so this is a real problem. You have a whole a whole area uh, that is when we, we serve with our hands, we serve with our time, we'll never get that time back. And we're still obligated to pay our business office rent and let alone not have an income. It's, it's supremely frustrating. And I have written the governor, the president, my congressman, everyone that would listen, because most of my friends that do this are just demoralized. And we don't want to run around asking for handouts, yet we're so struggling. We have no yeah. income and no resources and no one fighting for us. Goodness gracious, there's been more support for the local bartender than there has for the hairdresser, the massage therapist, or the or the esthetician, or the nail tech. I mean, we're all in trouble, and I just want people to be um, aware that as soon as the CARES Act passed, everyone thought we were going to be okay. Well, we're not okay. The money's not coming through. So, so Sarah, um, and I, I don't. The SBA and the uh, CARES Act um, on Friday marked the first day where Colorado businesses and sole proprietors could apply for the payroll protection plan or the PPP loan. And the, this money is designed to be used primarily for payroll and uh, business rent and utilities are also eligible expenses on this. So, and much of that loan is forgivable. And so um, I don't know if, so I'd open Friday and today. And, and so those resources are available. And, and um, if I would, uh, you know, if, if you're ha- having some challenges that, um, I would look uh, and work with the uh, Larimer County Small Business Development Center and, uh, for assistance and any additional information on this particular uh, program. I hope that's helpful. No, it's actually not because we are aware. We have gone online. You can't get through. Or if you do, they, they're not, they do not care about the single person. I don't have employees. I have me. Okay? And so I know that that plan is supposed to cover me. But I applied for the disaster loan, got a confirmation number, and I haven't heard anything. And the, I'm just letting you know the sole proprietor, self-employed, is getting run over. And I appreciate all those other business have employees, and they have – we're all in this together, but some of us have more skin in the game than others. Well, and, you know, on this Friday, April 10th, independent contractors and self-employed individuals can – I guess that's the beginning of that filing date. So that might be part of the issue there. Um, And I'm not trying to uh, soothe over the the challenges that you're facing, but understand that, uh, you know, that's uh, in part what the CARES Act was to address. And so please uh, reach out to um, our economic uh, health office or the Larimer County uh, Small Business Development Center, but also um, uh, look towards this this Friday as uh, the starting to file for self-employed individuals. Thank you very much, and and, uh, thanks for sharing that with us. You know, I'd like to if I may just add, I'm sorry, Ian, um, 
you know, keep an eye on the up, keep an eye out for the upcoming uh, the next town hall we're going to have. There will be someone from Small Business Administration. I think it'd be a perfect person to express those concerns to. And let me just say that I have a daughter who is a hairstylist and a daughter-in-law who is in skincare. And um, I can, you know, we all can hear the passion in your voice and the concern and just acknowledge that. But you might want to connect into our next town hall where, where there's someone who you can talk to and, and we'll make sure we give uh, Francis a heads up that you may be calling so she can be prepared for that. Perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. And thank you, Sarah. And that, I believe that's Thursday, correct? Yes. Our next one's on Thursday. Got it. All right, Sarah. So yeah, please try to participate on Thursday. And um, again, that filing, new, new filing for individuals will be on Friday. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read the Larimer Small Business Development Center phone number in case you don't have it. Sarah, it sounds like you obviously have called and, and emailed pretty much everybody you can, but in case you haven't reached out to the Larimer Small Business Development Center, that phone number is uh, 970-498-9295. And again, that's the Larimer Small Business Development Center, 970-498-9295. Uh, let's get our next question up, and I'll be uh, reading as many as I can because we've got about um, just about five minutes left in our live forum. So let me read this next one for you. Question is, how can I best support my employees with their mental health during this time? Uh, great question. Who'd like to take that one on? Well, thank you for that question. You know, I, um, I, I you know, I we talked about our 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 physical health during this time of of the virus, but clearly. Um, the isolation, the, the, uh, the uncertainty, the challenges are very prevalent that, uh, during this time. During our uh, previous uh, telephone town hall to the entire community, we actually had uh, some of our mental health professionals uh, call and speak about uh, the, the challenges at this time and, and, and with that. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I would point to, um, in terms of mental health at this time, that there are various resources outlined on the United Way website, and again, that's uwaylc.org. And if you're in crisis, um, you know, I would point someone to Summit Stone, uh, their crisis line, which is 970-494-4200, extension 4, uh, the Colorado Crisis Service at uh, 1-844-493- 8255. And uh, so those are some resources, but people experiencing anxiety or stress or other mental health concerns should call. And, and this is uh, some behavioral health specialists at 970-221-5551 and speak to someone there that can uh, provide uh, connections we have a connections program uh, at the uh, health district of Northern Denver County. They're available to support and answer questions and give referrals and to provide for services when necessary. So what we've done uh, by raising this question is, is one that um, uh, we should face head on and, and during these very challenging times. And although we need a physical distance, that doesn't mean we leave people alone. That means we probably have to reach out more than ever and share each other's uh, concerns and, and have a place to have a, a conversation, but also in need to make the connection to uh, our mental health health resources. So thank you for um, the question. You know, Mayor, um, this is Darren. Yeah, Darren. Uh, if, I, if I can add just a couple of things. The city of Fort Collins, I think, is the fourth or fifth largest business in, in Fort Collins. And so this question is top of mind for me almost on an hourly basis. Um, we have spent years building the culture and building the organization that we have. You all have spent, in many cases, years and decades building your culture, whether it's a, a you know a business of two people or, or like us with 2,500. Um, so a couple things that come to my mind that I've been trying to be very intentional about. One is stay very conscious as an employer, uh, be flexible, um, whether that's with alternative work schedules or um, just recognizing that people people are, you know, we have colleagues, I have a colleague that's fighting for his life right now, and, and that affects our culture. And, um, you know, 
continuing to be transparent, be extremely truthful with people. This next couple of weeks are going to be really, really hard weeks. If you listen to listen to our um, countywide, statewide, and and federal officials, be truthful about that, but be empathetic. Come from a place that you you understand um, where they're coming from. We may be asking them to come to work to provide essential service, and they're really, really sad about a family member or or worrying that they're going to infect one of their um, family members who might be at risk. Um, and then, and then I think be hopeful. And um, as I mentioned, not a not a naive optimist, but but um, you know we came into this strong as a community, as businesses, and um, we're going to come out of it strong. So um, I think also just just to finish up. Um, what I've found with my colleagues, whether it's a seasoned executive or, or someone who's maybe just starting an internship, um, stay attentive and be present to them. And then, you know, um, I'll tell you, uh, some of you might roll your eyes on this one, but I've learned a lot about being mindful as a leader and being very intentional and focusing on the things that matter most and, and letting those things that don't matter right now um, letting those go. And for me right now, um, and I know I can speak for our mayor and city council and our executive team, man, without, without our colleagues at the city, we, we, we really aren't, we're not going to be able to provide these services. They're really critical. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for those answers. Very much appreciated. And thanks for the question. Our next one's going to come from Andrew. And again, I'm just going to read it so that we can get through as many questions as we can in the time we have. Uh, he owns Lyric Cinema. Wondering, uh, Fort Collins is known as a music city. What supports are in place for individual artists and musicians? Who'd like that question from Andrew? I'll, I'll start off. Thank you very much, Andrew. And, and as you know, our economic health office communicates uh, regularly with uh, representatives from our creative uh, class in our community, um, our solopreneurs. We just had uh, a startup week and, and so forth. So there's, and we've been very intentional creating the Music City uh, of Fort Collins. And, and now with the challenges, um, you know, it really brings to light that, uh, you know, we want to keep the momentum going. And um, there, there is a, a list of uh, resources for artists and creatives at the, our Fort Collins website, fcgov.com forward slash business, provided by the uh, downtown creative district. And uh, also, um, the music district has broken down the uh, CARES Act uh, for musicians and creatives uh, specifically. And um, I mentioned Startup Week. Uh, the Startup Week team is creating videos that help businesses shift to uh, more of an online model. As we've seen on our social media, there's a lot of solo performances going on, and this is a way to to uh, shift, uh, to pivot, if you will, during this time. And then also Imagine 2020 uh, Artist Assistance Fund. It now covers uh, all of Colorado, and it has $15 million uh, coming to address uh, uh, artists. And so if you... Uh, want more information on the Imagine 2020 Artist Assistance Fund, you can go to the fcgov.com forward slash business website. Um, we want to keep the momentum going of our creatives in our community. That's one of the things that makes us such a vibrant community. And so what we need to do is is to, to reach out and, and have the continuity to enable um, our creatives to uh, be successful during this uh, difficult time. Thank you again. Appreciate that answer. And thank you, Andrew. Appreciate the question. We have come to the end of our hour-long forum, so thank you, everybody, who's participated. We did have a question I wanted to address uh, from our Spanish simulcast. We're broadcasting this event in Spanish as well. And one of our participants asked for a number at the city that he could call for assistance in Spanish. And so I'll ask our Spanish language interpreters to go ahead and read that phone number for Leo Escalante, uh, for our participant who is asking for that phone number now, if you could go ahead and read. Leo Escalante's phone number for our Spanish participant who is looking for a Fort Collins City contact that he could call for information in Spanish. So with that, uh, I appreciate everybody's participation. I'm going to go ahead and turn it uh, back over to our city manager, Darren Atterbury, start taking us to the close. Go ahead, Darren. 
Thank you, Ian. I'll turn it over quickly to the mayor in just a second. I just want to reiterate how appreciative we are for members of our business community as employers and employees and, and just the employers, the risk that you've taken in many cases, your entire livelihood. And um, we're going to do everything we can to try and make sure that 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 you come out of this stronger. Um, at the city of Fort Collins, we we do have some tools. Um, certainly at the federal government, and state level, um, uh, there are tools available. But um, our folks, led by Josh Burks and and our mayor and council, are doing I think pretty amazing push-ups in this space. Our partnership with the SBDC and Small Business Administration and the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and Larimer County, they're all working really, really well together. Uh, we hear you, we see you, and I think appreciate uh, the struggles that you're going through. Um, finally, I'll say um, I had a, a local business owner and tell me, uh, told me last weekend, two weekends ago, that one of the biggest things that the city can do is help small business navigate the, the state process and the federal process and it's you know worst thing in the world is for you to spend an hour of your time on hold and then and then you get disconnected or you're not online with the right person so josh burks and company our economic health director and, and company are working with partners to try and develop what we call what we'll call a one-stop shop navigator system and um we're working on that and hope to turn that live very, very soon. I think the goal is even as soon as a Wednesday of this week, but um, uh, stay tuned for that. So thank you, everyone. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be able to talk with you this evening. Mayor Troxell. Thank you, Darren. And and on behalf of the city council, which is uh, um, all in alignment to uh, work and strengthen our businesses, even during this very difficult time, we're truly at an unprecedented time, and, and, and more than ever, we need to come together. And we're not only talking about lives as it relates to the coronavirus, but it's, it's also we're talking about lives of people uh, in our community um, that, that need to survive, and, and not just the lives, but their livelihoods. And so um, we need to uh, more than ever uh, come together. And this is one of the things that I've always been so proud of our community is that we do come together. And in this in irony, we're coming together while we're having to stay physically apart. And, and uh, with that, we're finding new models to pivot and to find value and to create value that um, our citizens can respond to. And hopefully um, we even come out stronger at the uh, other side of, of this time. And so stay up to date at fcgov.com forward slash business and sign up for the newsletter at fcgov forward slash coronavirus and to get the latest information on, uh, on business and, and what's happening uh, federally at the state, at the county, and uh, locally with regard to the coronavirus. And finally, I'd just like to thank Ian, Tom, uh, Darren, and, and all of our participants, all of you, um, close to 150 people that have joined us here tonight. And I want to thank you um, for being with us, and uh, we're so appreciative of the collaboration and partnership, uh, and uh, we will become stronger coming out of this, and with that, let's continue to work together, find answers, and then uh, um, support each other. So thank you all.